snow. Okay. Okay. So genetics, and y'all all have the the blueprint, right? genetics, y'all are going to have about three questions, so not too much, so don't concentrate too much on this um, PowerPoint. The main things that you need to know are the teaching, okay, um, around <clears throat> issues around like, um, sorry, I'm going a little fast. Um, I would say around neural tube defects, how to prevent neural tube defects, um, signs and symptoms of congenital, congenital um, disorders like Turner's disease, so what types of um, signs and symptoms you would have around Turner's disease, and what type of um, education you would give to manage this disease. <clears throat> Same with Kleinfelter, so know the signs and symptoms of that and the education that you would give around this condition. PKU is an important one. So what type of um, education you would give. So you would want to you know, definitely have that um, um, special diet, special formula, right? Low protein. For this test, you don't really have to focus too much on galactosemia, but for sure for like um, NCLEX and your ATI, you would need to know around the teaching around galactosemia and what would you, what would you be um, looking at on exam. So jaundice, things like that. Same with fragile X, so know the characteristics of fragile X. And trisomy, the characteristic signs and symptoms of trisomy, and some of the education. Um, big thing with um, trisomy as well, like Down syndrome, they have a very, um, they have hypotonia, okay, including in their neck. So, what type of like activities would you not want to recommend to somebody with Downs? Like sports that like um, like things like gymnastics and things like that would probably not be beneficial for somebody with Downs. Okay, hypo hypotonia. So real flaccid sort of like um, they're not really they don't have a lot of flexion, um, and it also affects like their neck area. So you wouldn't want them to do something like gymnastics. Okay, so that's pretty much it for chapter three. Not too bad, right? Um, okay, so chapter, is it health promotion next? Yeah. So health promotion chapter four. Um, Okay, so you definitely want to know the teaching on breast self-exam, like when sh somebody should do it, how you would teach it, what you would look for if you were doing a clinical breast exam, like those five Ps. Um, again, um, 
who would probably benefit from MRI. So um, definitely know when you would probably recommend a breast MRI. Basic education about menstruation. Okay, so things around like toxic, so toxic shock syndrome, things around like keeping sanitary um, during menstruation, definitely no. Um, I would definitely know the differences between the different types of bleeding disorders, but especially how um, like you would manage them, so interventions and teaching around it, definitely know those. So management around amenorrhea, dysmenorrhea, also PMS. And this chapter two, just to keep in mind, it has 12, so this is a heavily weighted chapter, just to keep in mind. I would also um, know the differences between the different types of bleeding patterns, so abnormal, normal type bleeding, and the causes of those. Um, teaching around menopause is important. Um, and signs and symptoms of osteoporosis and some of the teaching and interventions we would do. Okay. I think that's all for that one. So then the other part of chapter four, contraception. <clears throat> so I would definitely know with each type, like people that would not be ideal or you know what would be contraindicated for those types of contraception. So like for instance, fertility awareness, I would not recommend for somebody with irregular perimenopause or breastfeeding. I would definitely know like just the basics of like when somebody is normally ovulating and when the most fertile time somebody is, that kind of teaching. Um, the signs and symptoms of ovulation, so signs and symptoms related to mucus changes, Characteristics. Definitely know that. <clears throat> also, about uh, I would definitely know about the uh, basal body temperatures. So, how to teach somebody what to do, <clears throat> what that is. Um, also, the secondary signs of um, of. Uh, Ovulation, so on this slide, like libido, bloating, mid-cycle abdominal pain, basal body temperature. <clears throat> Just basic teaching, like not to douche, things like that is really important. Um, if it's not going to be on this test, you definitely need to know for ATI and NCLEX, just basic teaching around like safe condom use, so protect from heat, don't use your teeth, check expiration, remove while erect, all those things are very important. Um, and also some of the like prevention around it, like STI, PID, things like that. So just like overall, just some of the contraindications or some like things like with like, for instance, spermicide. So it does not protect against HIV. It may cause irritation. So things like that, you definitely know, need to know about like with each of these like um, different contraception, contraceptive techniques. Suppositories require 30 minutes, like all of that stuff I would definitely know. Same thing um, with the diaphragm. So what's really important here, and if it's not going to be on the test, it will definitely be on ATI, um, like required to be fitted by a healthcare provider 
and we checked after each childbirth or weight gain or loss of 10 pounds. Like that kind of teaching, you definitely need to know. So definitely like go back on these slides and, and look at the teaching. And then what these different devices are good for or contraindicated. So like for instance, some might be contraindicated to smokers and people with like PID in the past. I definitely um, know the toxic shock syndrome, signs and symptoms. Also, um, I mean, this just, I mean, I'm just gonna summarize. I'm not gonna go like into detail, but just with all of them, like who would you recommend a LARC to who would be contraindicated to having something like an IUD? What would be the teaching around like an IUD? <clears throat> um, IUD signs and symptoms to report, that's very important. Same thing with Nexplan, so signs and symptoms. And then, of course, contraindications to hormonal contraceptives. And also some like risks, right? So like you have to consider people with like hypertension and high LDL and things like that um, if they were on hormonal contraceptives. <clears throat> So all these slides, they do have like content that you really need to know, like this one too, like, you know, which ones you would recommend for nursing people opposed to non-nursing people. Um, supplementation, they should take while they're on it. Signs and symptoms that they should um, look out for or that are normal while being on these. And this is pretty common, you'll probably see this again. So the aches or warning signs of oral contraceptives. Um, also the teaching around um, sterilization, so signs and symptoms and things like, you know, you would want to make sure somebody waits three months and goes through 20 ejaculations to clear remaining semen and that kind of stuff you definitely want to know. pretty much the same. I would definitely look at all of those um, types of contraceptives and know the teaching signs and symptoms, contraindication, and which ones are best for certain groups. All right, so going on to chapter five, genetics and fetal, or no, that's first five. Um, I think it's reproductive problems is next, yeah. Okay. So definitely know the signs and symptoms of benign breast conditions and treatment for that. Um, and galactorrhea, signs and symptoms of that, um, and how we would test and some of the teaching around that. So yeah, all these breast conditions, so the benign ones, ductic stasia, all of those, I would know the signs and symptoms and the teaching around those interventions. Endometriosis, endometriosis know who would be at risk for having that and the signs and symptoms and, and what we would do to treat that. Same with PCOS. I would definitely know the teaching that you would give to somebody going through infertility and um, like the first line of treatments. So you don't really have to get into like knowing this slide per se, but definitely the teaching around like improving fertility, this slide is important. 
how you can evaluate for like um, possible um, hospitable um, mucus or when somebody's ovulating, so teaching around science of ovulation. Some risks with sperm quality, definitely no. Like, because as a nurse, you don't have to be an expert in all this, but your biggest thing, like, role as a nurse is safety and ID variations, deviations from normal. So, like, if you're able to, like, ID somebody, like, oh, they're over 40 or they live this type of lifestyle, then you could ask questions. But um, that's what all these tests are mostly designed for you to do. So, um, like, when it comes to male fertility, definitely no, like, who's at risk and what it could do to, to sperm quality. Definitely know the first line, like what you would give the first line medwise for fertility and who would be contraindicated to those meds and maybe what meds you would use as second line. <clears throat> also, um, yeah who would be a good candidate for IUI, that would be something that you would probably, or people that would be contraindicated um, to this um, procedure. Um, the role of progesterone supplementation, I would know that. That's pretty much it. Any questions on chapter five? Okay. Okay, so genetics. Okay. <clears throat> estrogen, progesterone, prostaglandins, and hormones, FSH, LH, um, and just the common approximation of somebody's like menstruation cycle. <clears throat> and this chapter has, let me see, seven. Um, so, definitely know the role of, um, like, the umbilical cord on assessment, what it should look like. This slide is pretty important when it comes to just all the content on the umbilical cord. Same with um, the amniotic fluid. Okay, so, the role of amniotic fluid the amount somebody should have, what's normal, abnormal, that kind of stuff. Also the role of the placenta is pretty important. And the functions that it has. I would definitely know like when, um, during fetal development, when fertilization takes place and when it becomes an actual fetus, goes from embryo to fetus. It's important to know that, just in general, but um, like when the fetal stage starts, when um, somebody's most vulnerable to teratogens and what type of teratogens are, you know, contraindicated with um, pregnancy. Um, 
I would definitely know when like quickening starts. And then just the different overall, you don't have to memorize the slide, but just overall difference between like a full term and a baby that's maybe like preterm when it comes to like skin and lamugo and things like that, testes when they descend and things like that. Um, going back to teratogens, so things um, like all of these maternal infections and issues around like hyperthermia and things like that. And folic acid, the importance of folic acid and needing to take it during um, conception is important. And that's it. Okay, chapter seven. Physical and psychological changes. So I would definitely know all the normal physiological changes of pregnancy. Because again, if you know the normals, then you know the abnormals, the, the deviations. So I would definitely know all these slides when it comes to cardiovascular system and the normal physiologic changes. How you would teach um, somebody to prevent supine hypotension and physiologic anemia. Again, all the normal stuff with GI system, urinary system, all the systems know all that. This is an important slide, so anticipated normal weight gain for somebody that's normal, underweight, overweight, obese. Going back, so normal, know all the normal changes in the endocrine system. Definitely know the, the hormones of pregnancy and their role. This is an important slide. You need to know all the subjective and objective changes. And when you could feel, for instance, like quickening and things like that, Braxton Hicks. teaching when somebody should be able to expect hearing like the heartbeat. Okay, that's all with that one. You need to know all this slide. It's so important. So all of the terms associated with obstetrics. So the antepartum, interpartum, postpartum, gestation what's defined as abortion, um, the normal duration of pregnancy, so early term, full term, late term, all of that is very important for you to know. The multigravita, para, nulla para, prima para, all of that. Oh, I meant to give you another practice question. I'll do that today. I'll give that to you all today. But the multi, yeah, all the, the G, P, T, A, L, yeah, I'll do that. So definitely know post-term, pre-term, and then how to do the PTPAL. Okay, so the GPTPAL. <clears throat> so here's some examples, but definitely know these slides because you will see it again. Um, so we already talked about all the normal stuff, so knowing all the abnormal, like issues with blood pressure, um, somebody that's either really underweight or overweight in their weight gain, um, normal patterns, like normal fetal heart tone, right? So we need to know what's a normal. Also, when we could anticipate fetal movement. <clears throat> all the normal labs and why, especially around like RH, so getting um, RH typing, why that would be important. How to calculate Nigel's rule, definitely know how to do that. 
how to check fundal height using McDonald method and when you would be able to start doing that. That's important to know. <coughs> and what, what would be anticipated if it was not measuring correctly, like if it was under in measurement, what that would mean. Again, I've already stated this, but knowing quickening and when should somebody feel that, know when heartbeat would be detected. Um, definitely why and when we do the screening test of GDM, GBS, chromosome screens. Danger signs, definitely need to know that. So that's why I showed you that, because it says vaginal bleeding, abruption, previa. I showed you that short little PowerPoint today so you know the difference between the two. Um, if it's not on this test, you definitely need to know for future tests. Um, frequency of visits, so every four weeks the first 28 weeks, and then two weeks every two weeks until 36 weeks, and then weekly after 36 weeks. That's important to know. And that's all with this one. So that was chapter, let me see. Like definitely know the causes and the teaching around all of these discomforts. So frequency, fatigue, Same with the slides. So all of the common discomforts and maybe what you would teach them to prevent that. Some of the, I would definitely need, um, you need to know the contraindications to exercise and dangers associated with activity. And teratogenic substances, definitely know that. 